Hey everyone, Austin here again with another quick play. This time a three for one deal. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is playing or attempting to play uh, the arcade versions of Altered Beast, Shinobi, and then Golden Axe, all by Sega, classic Sega arcade games. Uh, we're going to be doing this via the uh, Sega Vintage Collection, uh, or at least that's the banner name for uh, each of these titles. Uh, these were released originally on the Xbox 360 uh, sometime prior to 2010. It's kind of hard to pin down the exact release date these days and 2022 as of doing this video. Um, but we are currently playing these on the Xbox Series X. And uh, so, yeah, these were originally Xbox 360 releases, but they're all backwards compatible on Xbox One consoles and then Xbox Series consoles as well. Well, at least uh, if you purchased them originally. Now, Alter Beast and Shinobi are still available uh, to this day. You can buy them on Microsoft's website or through the Xbox Store. Uh, they're five dollars a piece, and they're in the solid ways to play this ga these games. Uh, not not too bad ways to play these games. Um, Golden Axe, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, is unavailable standalone. Uh, there is a separate Sega Vintage Collection that is like a Golden Axe trilogy. It basically has the arcade Golden Axe, from what I can tell, and then it's got the Genesis Golden Axe 2 and 3, and I think that was probably released somewhere around 2012. You can still get that. It's, I think, double the price. It's $10, but you do get three games, um, and uh, you can still grab that, and it's backwards compatible as well on Xbox One and series consoles. So, But yeah, three for one deal. I don't predict we're going to do too well here, and, and for those of you guys that have not seen this series before on my channel. Um, basically, this is my casual, just fire up a game and see how we do series. Uh, so don't expect awesome gameplay or anything like that. I have not actually played these in quite a while. Uh, so we're probably gonna get wrecked. These are all actually very difficult games. Uh, Altered Beast, I, I'd say, is probably the most uh, doable of the bunch, but it requires a lot of memorization. There was one point in time where I was able to one credit clear this version of the game. Uh, however, um, you know, I haven't played it in a long time and all that memorization has gone out the window. Uh, so <laughs> we're probably not going to make it very far. If it allows us to continue, maybe we'll continue a couple times in each game. Um, but for the most part, uh, we're probably not going to do too well. But starting off here, we've got uh, Altered Beast. And uh, let's go to our options menu real quick just to make sure everything is set. Uh, we do want to leave smoothing off. Um, and now, just to FYI, these are old, like, emulation packages. Um, so there's, the, the video quality is not the best. It's still soft, even when you have smoothing turned off. It's, so it's not the best image. Uh, when I first played these back in the day, I played them on a CRT. And so they actually looked pretty good on a CRT, and I think they still look decent enough. Um, but when you blow them up on an HD screen, uh, you know, they, they definitely look really, really soft, even when smoothing turned off. Uh, we've got the wallpaper turned off. Off. Uh, you can adjust the screen size and wow okay interesting so it actually defaulted to uh, widescreen uh, so let me bring it in a little bit and you can see how the image is actually a, a little uh, you know it's very soft uh, so let's try to get a sort of 4 by 3 aspect ratio here uh, come on ultra bees go back to your okay there we go um, yeah, I think that'll be good enough. We'll, we'll go ahead and roll with that. And let's go ahead and hit done. Let's check out our controls. Now, I am using a uh, a Power A uh, Fusion something or another controller. It's a uh, Sega Saturn style controller. I was actually using this on my TMNT Shredder's Revenge stream I did uh, a little while ago. And um, it's, it's a really good controller, although its durability is questionable at best. Um, but we're going to be using... Uh, that it's got a really good d-pad uh, until it breaks anyway <laughs> so let's uh, check out my controls here so we got punch is a uh, kick is B uh, it looks like I was using my arcade stick previously last time I played this this is a while ago let's um, let's see I don't know what really good controls are for this game uh, let's do uh, punch is a okay uh, kick is B and then jump is right trigger okay cool we'll go ahead and roll with that um, alrighty then uh, there's a how to play uh, which is actually pretty cool so for anyone that's never played this game before uh, you can jump into that and get a, a little heads up before you start uh, there is, are actually leaderboards I don't know if they still function there is multiplayer and then we're gonna do single player uh, so let's go ahead and go to new game uh, looks like uh, the settings are on default hardcore. Yeah, definitely don't want hardcore <laughs> um, Okay, uh, so lives three energy three and start game. Let's go ahead and jump into altered beast 
Let's rise from our grave. All right, so if you've never played Altered Beast before, pretty simple game, but quite challenging if you don't know what to do. Uh, you can punch, you can kick, and the idea is to destroy these uh, white dogs. And by doing so, you'll get power-ups. Now, this first dog is always really easy to, to attack. He just kind of chills there. And you get powered up. Your character gets larger. And um, let's go ahead and try to jump over this guy. But you also got these brown dogs. Usually what happens is two brown dogs come in. Or apparently one in this case. <laughs> and, then the, and then a white dog comes in. And then you get another power up. Now, the problem is the dogs come in really fast. And you have to memorize where they are. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That was terrible. These blocks came up underneath me. Um, so what happens is you have to be fully powered up. You have to be changed into your beast form. That's why they call it Altered Beast. Start off as human, and then you get changed into a beast. It's kind of a cool concept you don't see very often in, uh, in games. It's one of the th reasons Altered Beast was actually really cool for a lot of us growing up in the 80s. Oh, that guy just wrecked me. Holy crap, are you serious, man? Good old classic cheap Sega difficulty, man. I, I, I want to say I love it, but in reality, I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't think that that sort of gameplay has aged all that well. You make one mistake and you just get annihilated. And so, yeah, you have to basically change into your beast form. Um, change into your beast form. If I can actually do that successfully, and apparently I cannot. And man, this is just some really cheap level design right here. Holy crap. Like I said, I, I do not have this memorized like I used to. And I, there's a lot of cheap enemy placement, which kind of blocks you from getting your power-ups. And so the idea is to get to your beast form by the time you get to that, like, wizard guy at the end, whatever you want to call him. And if you get to him when you're in your beast form, the boss triggers. Now, ideally, you want to have the boss trigger immediately, or on the first go-around. Um, if you don't, then the level will keep looping until you get fully powered up. Now, each beast form has uh, multiple attacks, so punch for this guy is a uh, fireball. It's very useful. And then kick is this, like, dash kick. I prefer the fireball. Oh, my ears. That is some really bad sound emulation. <laughs> I don't know if that happens on the actual Xbox 360. If anybody knows, let me know. But man, yeah, that was pretty bad. I don't know if that's like a backwards compatibility glitch. But yeah, for this boss, I like to just use my fireball and then just kind of dodge the heads. But if you guys have never seen the arcade version of this before, it's it's really cool compared to like the Genesis version. I s oh more bad sound sound emulation. Oof, that hurts my ears. Um, the Genesis version I still love, but it was heavily cut back compared to the arcade game. It has a much lower color count. Uh, you know, art assets don't look as detailed, and uh, obviously, you know, a lot much less animation and stuff like that. So. You know, when I found out back in the day, like, the arcade version came to Xbox 360, I was really stoked. Uh, and what's actually interesting about it, they use box art that, um, is more reminiscent of, like, the Genesis games. Or the Master System games. Um, for all these arcade titles that we're using. So, I actually kind of ignored some of these titles when they first came out. Altered Beast and Shinobi in particular. Because I thought they were Genesis versions of, of the games. But no, it turns out they're actually the arcade games, and once I discovered that, I was like, oh man, that is awesome. Because we had never really gotten a, a really, like, you know, e like even a half-decent conversion of the arcade game by that point. Like the actual arcade version, you know, everything was just, you know, trimmed down console ports, uh, not emulated packages of these arcade games, and so... You know, and again, for those of you guys familiar with, like, the Genesis version, or maybe even, uh, like, the, some of the PC Engine conversions, uh, you'll notice that, you know, things are just a lot more detailed here. And it's really cool, and I am just getting wrecked, man. Like I said, this is a very memorization-heavy game. This is not a game you can go into and just kind of, like, react on the fly, and then expect to succeed. It's just not gonna happen. That's one of the frustrating things about Altered Beast is there's very little wiggle room for, impro in, like, improvisation. 
um, like even on the first level, you know, generally in arcade games, first levels usually aren't too challenging. Like, you know, they kind of get you up to speed. Um, you know, they get you into a rhythm of things, but Altered Beast just kind of throws you into the deep end, like right away. All right, so this is the dragon. Punch is his uh, projectile. Kick is his uh, little shield here, which is probably better than his uh, projectile. Man, these sound effects are really harsh in this emulated package. Yeah, the sound levels are just completely all over the place with this. Alright, well, that sucked. Let's go ahead and continue. <laughs> that was absolutely terrible. Oh, man. I told you, we probably weren't going to do too well at this. Uh, this is definitely the kind of game you have to practice. You have to learn all the level layouts, all the enemy placements. Especially with the dogs, if you don't know where the dogs are coming out, you're, you're not- you're gonna miss them! And you're not gonna get powered up, and then the level's gonna loop and loop, and then you're gonna lose tons of health in the process, because enemies just overwhelm you. But here we go, now we can fight the boss. Welcome to your doom. Oh, my ears! Oh! I can't wait until this game's over with, jeez. Oh, and I died again. That was terrible. So I like to get up close and use my little shield thing. And there we go. You can actually wreck him pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I don't, again, I don't know if it's the, like the backwards compatibility or if this is just how it was on the 360. I'll have to fire it up on my 360 and, and try it. Um, but man, that sound emulation is just, ooh, awful. Awful, awful, awful. I kind of regret saying at the beginning that this is a solid way to play this game, because that sound, uh, is... grating. And I don't normally complain about, you know, sound issues like that. I'm usually pretty pretty forgiving, but that was, uh, that was, it's definitely pretty bad. So now something I didn't mention, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me, dude! This is what I'm talking about, this game is just... Ugh, it's something alright. If you press up and jump, you'll basically do a super jump. Oh my jeez, this is just brutal. It is, it's mainly brutal because I don't know what I'm doing at this point. I, I haven't, you know, I was regularly playing this game back in like 2010. That was a long time ago. Uh, I've played a lot of games since. And again, like I said, Altered Beast is one of those games where you have to know exactly what you're doing. And I, I missed, I was trying to super jump and then punch and that just did not work. Whew. It's rough. Also, the Genesis version is a good bit easier in comparison. That's generally the case with these conversions. Now, the first Shinobi, unfortunately, was not ported to Genesis. It was ported to, like, NES and Master System and whatnot. No Genesis port of the first Shinobi, unfortunately. Uh, but Altered Beast and Goldrun Axe both were. And they're both significantly easier on the Genesis. Now, the Genesis version does, of, of Golden Axe, which I should probably talk about when I'm actually playing Golden Axe, and not Altered Beast, but... Uh, we'll go ahead and continue one more time. Never give up. <laughs> it says never give up. The Genesis version of Golden Axe actually has some extra content in it. Um, some of it I think is actually harder than some of the stuff in the arcade game. Um, but that's kind of the exception to the rule. Oh, and I don't have these dogs memorized, and so I'm just getting wrecked by them. Man, ducking and punching just does not oh, <laughs> does not work in this game, or at least against these guys. It works in, in funny enough in the Master System version. So it looks like. Holy crap, dude, these guys are brutal. Your timing has to be, like, impeccable. Or, or like, your... Uh, your gauging of distance has to be impeccable. Oh, and I fell down a pit. That's instant death. This might be one of those games where... <laughs> Holy crap, are you... Alright, I, I give up, man. Screw this game. I'm, I'm done with Altered Beast. Alright guys, we're gonna switch over to Shinobi. Alright, so now we're on Shinobi. So, uh, yeah, same deal as before. Let's go to our options menu. Let's go to settings. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off the wallpaper. Let's go to check out our screen size. It looks like, uh, that is kind of big. Let's go ahead and bring that in a little bit, just like with the Altered Beast. Um, just to kind of keep things similar. 
And, uh, all right, let's check out our controls, because again, previously I was actually probably playing this on an arcade stick. Uh, so jump is A, attack is B, ninja, let's do right trigger. Okay, it's already set up. So ninja is like your ninpo, kind of like in, uh, you know, uh, Revenge of Shinobi on, on the Genesis. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit done, and hit done, and go to single player. So Shinobi's a really tough game. Um, enemy bullet speed is slow. Uh, let's go ahead and leave it on slow. We'll leave continues on three, and let's go to start game. Uh, now, Shinobi is, a, uh, honestly, I think it's easier to get into than Altered Beast. Altered Beast in the arcade is brutal, like, from the start. Shinobi is, I think, a little bit smoother in the beginning. So, basically, you can jump. You've got uh, projectiles, which is how you mostly want to attack in this game. Um, and, yeah, it is one-hit kills in this. Uh, but the idea is to, uh, you know, collect these hostages, and by doing so, you'll get power-ups. Now, you've got multiple levels in this game, so you can press up and jump to go upwards. You can press down and jump to go back down. And what I like to do is kind of lead my shots a little bit as I'm scrolling the screen over. It's a good tactic in anything where you've got projectiles, like a Mega Man game. So we got all the hostages, so now we can actually go to the boss fight. And this is actually our boss. Well, not the boss fight. We go to the second uh, part of the first level, and then we go to the boss fight. So there are multiple sections for each level before you get to the boss. But that was the boss that appeared. You can also crawl on the ground. Just kind of duck and, and hold diagonally forward or backwards, depending on the way you want to go. I think we actually played a little bit of Shinobi in one of my recent Master System streams. Uh, that was pretty fun. Master System Shinobi is actually a pretty good conversion, all things considered. It's a little bit easier than the arcade game, uh, as I mentioned. Let's go ahead and get this Spider-Man guy. I want to say in the original arcade version, it was actually like Spider-Man. <laughs> Probably not officially licensed, uh, which is why the colors were, were changed on that character in some of the various home conversions of the game. Even this Xbox 360 one. All right, we've got another hostage. Go to next stage, and there's our boss again. Try not to get hit by his fireball. And onto the boss. So for this boss, we need to actually smack him in the face and dodge his fire. His fire is a little erratic. So I'm just going to try to do that as quickly as possible. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That was some garbage, garbage patterns, man. That was horrible. Like I said, the, the fire, I think, is pretty erratic. I don't think there's... Yeah, there's no rhythm or rhyme to it. Let's go ahead and use our nin, Ninpo. Let's see if that actually kills him. Nice, it killed him. Very nice. Ideally, you use that for the levels themselves when things get really difficult. But, I, you know, you can use it on the bosses, too. Alright, so this, you have to actually shoot the ninjas. And you're... Seems like you're best off just mashing. I think you've got unlimited ammo here. Oh! I missed one. That's not good. Those bonus levels are pretty fun. They look pretty cool, too. That was actually uh, replicated really well in the Master System version as well. Alright, on to stage two. We have one life left. Those shield guys can be a little, little difficult to deal with, especially as you progress through the game. Man, I don't know how I want to do this. Uh, let's jump up. Use our magic. Apparently, that's the first time I've ever used that, because I just got an achievement for it. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Alright, press down and jump. Go ahead and grab this character, jump over his projectiles, and then get close. And I guess apparently he stands up when you get close. So for the shield guys, a lot of times I like to just kind of like... Whoa! Are you gotta be kidding me. I wasn't expecting him to still throw his thing. I thought I was going to kill him before he does that. But definitely a game where you've got to really understand all, you know, the enemy patterns and, uh, you know, how the enemies function. Otherwise, you're going to get wrecked. All right, down and jump. Same thing as before, get close, and then he stands up. Okay, very cool. Let's up and jump, and then kick him from behind. Kick him in the butt. All right. So, you'll notice that uh, my shuriken actually gets upgraded to, like, this little, like, grenade gun. And that actually really, really helps against the shield guys. And that's a preview of our boss. Yes, you have to fight a helicopter. <laughs> 
Only in classic Sega arcade games. Now, there are probably a lot of other arcade games that make you do that too, but still. Okay, it looks like we can get up close to the shield guys and, you know, it's a little more doable to kill them in that case. These green ninja are kind of tough to deal with. Oh, I did not see that coming. That's our first game over. That was bad. Let's go ahead and just continue. Just try to lead my shots as I scroll the screen over. That really helps out. It's a very good tactic. Again, like I said, in, in games where you can constantly shoot, uh, it's good to lead your shots. And I almost made the same mistake. Looks like I... Ooh, are you serious, man? You're going to be hearing me say that a lot in this, uh, this quick play. Jeez. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, so... I just recognize it looks like with the shield guys, if you uh, kill them and they've already thrown their projectile, their projectile just keeps going. It does not go back. And I, I just, I can't even see the guy. That's really frustrating. So one of, one of my pet peeves in game design is when enemies can shoot you from off screen, extremely frustrating. Um, there's a great design choice in a lot of uh, shoot em ups in particular, where, um, enemies will not shoot you from off screen. Uh, so. And you can't even jump up from down here. Are you serious, man? You can jump up that high from on, on previous levels, but not here. All right. Well, let me come up here and just kind of inch the screen over. There we go. Total memorization right there. Uh, it's frustrating. You have to memorize it. Memorize or die. Um. Which, you know, I'm okay with memorize or die situations, but I de definitely prefer it when it's not because of cheap game design. Like, I'd rather it be like, oh, there's like 15 projectiles coming at me and I have to dodge a very particular way or I die. I, I like memorizing things like that. I don't like memorizing cheap stuff like, oh, here's an enemy that's throwing a projectile from off screen. If you don't memorize where this off screen, off screen projectile is coming from, then you're gonna die. And that's just, that's frustrating memorization, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, I can think of a bunch of games that have memorization like that. Um, I remember uh, learning Batman Return of the Joker on the NES a few years back for a, a Let's Play. And that was one of those games where there's a lot of, like, memorize or die due to poor game design uh, situations. So, uh, let's kind of come over here. I'm kind of curious if there's anything else. I don't think there is. Nope, nothing. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't put the final hostage all the way over to the right. And I'm running low on time. Whoa there. But you can probably see how Shinobi is still a little bit easier to get into than Altered Beast. Uh, it is a hard game, which, I mean, it's an arcade game. Arcade games... <laughs> Are you serious, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Arcade games are supposed to be hard. They're supposed to be hard, short experiences. Um, you know, getting players to pump money, more money into the machines. And through repeated plays, the players get better at them, just naturally. And, you know, Shinobi is no different. You know, originating, originating in the arcade. A lot of Sega arcade games were also traditionally pretty short, too. Uh, you know... Wow, three enemies stacked on top of each other. That kind of put me in a bind. And uh, the the standard gunner was hiding behind one of the shield guys, so I couldn't actually attack him. I thought about using my uh, my ninpo or my ninja magic. See, that's that's a memorize or die situation right there. Um, so you you kill this guy. It's like, oh, there's one. There's one. Oh wait, now there's two! <laughs> it's like, I thought the, the third one was actually the, the double, but... Yeah, memorize or die. <laughs> I think that's game over, actually. <laughs> wow! Shinobi, you're a pain in the ass! Alright, let's move on over to Golden Axe. Alright, so just like before, we're gonna actually roll into our options menu here for Golden Axe. Uh, Turn the wallpaper off. Uh, screen size, let's check that out. I have to wait for the attract mode. Uh, okay, let's bring that in a little bit, like with the others. 
Uh, I don't know what the uh, enhance sound is. I've never actually messed around with that before, but we're going to go ahead and leave it off. We're going to use the original arcade soundtrack. Uh, I really love the soundtrack to Golden Axe. It's a very moody score, and I, I think a lot of other players would agree with me on that. And it's just, there's something about it that just resonates. And uh, it's, it's really cool. So let's uh, check our controls. So A, B is jump, magic is right trigger. Okay, it looks like I have, I, I prefer like a straight three button kind of layout. That's usually how like these would be set up in an arcade or at least in a modern arcade. Uh, some of these older arcade cabinets would have like weird uh, button layouts, uh, which never made a whole lot of sense to me, but you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and hit done and go back to single player, new game. And uh, just gonna leave it on the default settings. And we're gonna go ahead and start game. Now, the cool thing about Golden Axe, if you've never played it, uh, it's a beat em up, uh, but you have three characters you can pick from. And, uh, you know, they have different, like, attack ranges and whatnot, and they have uh, different amounts of magic that can be used. Um, hmm, I'm trying to debate, like, who I wanna use. I'm, I'm usually. I'm gonna use. Um, I'm gonna use him, I think it was, was it Gilius? Gilius? I don't remember his name. I don't remember a lot of the names in this game. <laughs> but uh, what I like about him is that uh, his axe has pretty good range. Now, unfortunately, uh, he's got the least amount of magic that can be used, um, but uh, he's also just, he's just got really good range with his axe, though. So what you can do in Golden Axe is attack just by pressing uh, the A button. You can press B and then attack in the air. Uh, however, one of the cool things about this game is by double tapping, you can actually run. Uh, that was like one of the first ga games of this type I can think of where you can actually run and there's actually well for some characters It's a shoulder slam um, uh, For Tyrus flair who's the female uh, I think it's actually like a running kick uh, For uh, our guy right here. It's a head slam <laughs> You can see that he uses the spikes on his helmet to uh, slam into enemies um, But these are uh, these little thieves here um, they're not really thieves, uh, I don't know what you call them. Elves? Midgets? That's probably offensive in this day and age. <laughs> um, they can drop magic. They can also drop health later on. The, the, the ones that drop health are actually colored green. And after each level, you kind of sit at a, uh, a fire for the night. You kind of rest overnight. It's a nice little, like, segue into the next level. But these guys will come in, and then you can, uh, you know, smack them to get some more magic between levels. Uh, but also, that's usually where the green ones appear. You can get you get health back in between stages. So I'm going to kind of let him go off screen. You can see at, on the top, uh, my magic is actually maxed out. Now, uh, riding animals in this game, very, very useful. If you've never played this game before, uh, but you do decide to try it, get these things and stay on them because they're very powerful and they've got good range. Um, but you can also use your uh, your uh, your dash function. I'm gonna go ahead and use my magic here. Try to get rid of that middle enemy, and then try to take these guys uh, head on one by one. Oops. All right. Go ahead and dash. Let's get close. Oh. There we go. Got him. And the movement in Golden Axe is actually really slow. It, it takes a while to get to. And what's interesting is that it's very slippery. Yeah, it feels like you're walking on ice. Uh, it's very interesting movement mechanics, for better or for worse. Okay, so I only got two magic, but that's fine. I, I like using magic as like, you know, um, you know, when I'm panicking, when I've got enemies just surrounding me. Or I use it on bosses, because I know that I'm going to get some of it back, uh, you know, on the, uh, the in-between section. But yeah, your running attack is probably the best attack in the game. I'm not gonna lie. You've also got an attack where if you press both buttons together, or or both, uh, you know, jump and attack together, you'll do like a special attack. Uh, for for this guy, it's actually quite handy. It's also very powerful, but you got to get it just right. If you don't get it just right, then. Uh, you know, you're gonna miss, and you're gonna be just left wide open. So there are two types of dragons in this. You've got these uh, these blue ones that just shoot this fire down to the ground. Very, very useful. Oops, took a hit. Let's go ahead and use my magic, because I wanna I wanna keep this dragon. There we go. Now, one thing I love about the arcade version, you notice that the enemies they don't go away. 
they turn to stone. That's really cool. And in the uh, home versions of the game, they uh, they generally just like disappear, which is very typical for for beat 'em ups on consoles. You know, much more limited memory configurations on home systems at the time compared to the arcade games. And so, you know, the arcade games could handle stuff like that. But, you know, the Sega Genesis, in the early days at least, not so much. Now, these skeletons can be really difficult to deal with, so you really want to stay on your dragons here if you can. Alright, looks like that's it. Alright, go ahead. Oh, here's the green guy. I definitely need some health. I'm going to prioritize health first. Because kind of like Altered Beast, you'll notice that when enemies hit you, they hit pretty hard. You only have three blocks of health. And, uh, you know, those blocks of health can go away very, very fast. And I meant to let the uh, first level transition play out. These are really cool stage transitions, especially for the time that this came out. There, I, I can't really think of anything quite like it that came before it. I try to knock this guy off. So this is the red dragon. Uh, he shoots a fireball out. Long range. Which is very, very fun. Very useful. You gotta be accurate with it, though. Otherwise, uh, you will miss, and then you'll get knocked off your dragon. You get knocked off a couple times, and then uh, you lose it for good. They just run off the screen. And it's actually cool that they do that. Uh, a lot of games would be like, oh, the, 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 the power-up or animal would just disappear. But in this case, they have personality. They're like, oh, screw this. And they just, they fly off the screen. Like, they literally run away, uh, which is cool. There's a lot of fun details in, in Golden Axe like that. I want to actually try to hit this guy. Okay, there we go. I think some enemies are going to appear, so what I might do is actually make, like, trigger them. Let's see. Any enemies? Oh, I thought enemies were going to appear. What I was going to do is actually use my magic on them. Uh, so, alright. Let's, uh, go ahead and do a dash over here. That's not a dash. I just completely lost a life, I think, because of that. Um, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I'm still, you know, one of the things about bouncing back and forth between games uh, like this is that it takes me a little while for the controls to sink in. Um, but yeah, so the idea was to use the, uh, you know, the running attack just like that to, to get over the gap. And let's jump and attack just like that. Smack him like that. Smack him like that. Yeah, good deal. This attack is actually really good against those guys. That's nice. Okay, I don't want to collect these. I, I want to put them on the screen and then hope that there's still some uh, on the main area here. All right, let's go ahead and use our magic. You notice that these potions, they don't disappear. Oh, I can only go over so far. Oh, I hate it when games do that. You know, it's just, just there's like an arbitrary invisible wall. Oh, I really hate it when games do that. Not a favorite design choice of mine, that's for sure. And so for this guy, we're ooh, that is not gonna work. Oh, and that's our first game over. Let's go ahead and continue. I'm gonna go ahead and use some magic. Try to get rid of this guy on the left. So my my best bet here is probably to do that, the running dash. And I don't think these big knight guys can run. Yeah, they're super slow. Whoa, that is not good. Let me see if I can do a different strategy. Just get up close. Holy crap, dude. That is not, not, not good. <laughs> he just interrupted my attack completely. Oh, good old cheap Sega arcade design. Ah, oh, I don't love it. <laughs> I used to love it. I don't love it anymore. Um, so it looks like maybe trying to corner them, hit them on wake up. Basically, when the enemies are, are getting up off the ground. In fighting games, we call that a wake up. Uh, so when you hear me say on wake up in both my videos and, and live streams, uh, that's what I'm talking about. And that goes for me too. You know, if I get knocked down and I can try to do something as I'm waking up or getting up off the ground, um, that's, that's what I mean when I say on wake up. Specifically when my character is getting up after being knocked down. All right, so Golden Axe is not a very long game, uh, if you guys didn't know. And it's it's only like five, I want to say like five or six stages, maybe just five. Um, but it's a fun game. Uh, what I like about it is that it doesn't take too long to go through, and that, that goes for a lot of these 
System 16 era Sega arcade games. Uh, they're not very long. Oh yeah, this is a this is a tough level. There's a lot of skeletons here, but I'm thinking maybe my back attack will be handy. I think the last time I played this, holy crap, that is just I hate how they can just interrupt you. That is rough. Okay, yeah, you got to knock them down first and then just kind of like time your attack. Yeah, and the thing is, like, if they hit you once, they can just pretty much take off an entire block or two of health. Boom! Look at that! Ow! Two blocks of health for for just failing to connect my attacks. Yeah, definitely a, a difficulty spike, that's for sure. Yeah, the thing about these doing these videos is that sometimes I have played the games recently and I've, I've got the controls, you know, under control. No pun intended. Um... And in other cases like this, I haven't played them in a long time, and so I'm not comfortable with them. And so, like, I'm still trying to get the hang of my controls. Uh, like, I was just playing a game where jump is the first button. Now I'm playing a game where the jump is the second button, so I'm still pressing the first button to try to jump sometimes because of the previous game I just played. Let's use my magic. So yeah, these are these could be definitely interesting, you know, playthrough attempts, that's for sure. Sometimes I'll just do my uh oh no, I was going to say sometimes I'll just do my jumping attack. And this is one of those games, and I hate it when games do this too, where it says you have one life left. You don't actually have one life left. You're actually on your last life. Uh I prefer it when games uh the numerical value for your life counter or your lives counter goes to 0. After, after the one, <laughs> this, it just goes two, one, and then game over. So you literally only get two lives. And that's the normal setting. The, you know, if you want to play, you know, hard, you can just play with one life. Uh, now, again, you, you can extend your health bar. I think you can go up to five blocks of health in this version. I don't know if that cancels out, like, leaderboard support. Uh, some of these older Xbox Live arcade games, what would happen is if you tried to change the default settings, anything for leaderboards would be n rendered null. Uh, so, you always had to play on default settings if you wanted to try to get on the leaderboards. Uh-oh. And I- and you cannot use your magic to get out of that. So, that is- uh, that's rough. So there's literally like no panic attack if you're in the middle of uh, an enemy combo. The jump attack is actually really good in this game. Uh, I mean, especially with our, our guy here, because you can see just how big his axe is. All right, there we go. Got the dragon. I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Actually, you know what? This might even be our last level. Lots of enemies here. There we go. Gotta keep the dragon. If you don't keep the dragon, then this part is actually quite challenging. Because not not just one of those big knights, but now we now we have to deal with two. They have crazy range, and they're hard to get close to, as you saw when I fought the, the first one, the silver one, as a boss fight. Yeah, the whole enemies turning into stone thing is actually a really nice, uh, you know, detail. They could have just left the enemies there, just fully colored, but them turning the stone just gives the whole thing so much more uh, personality. Yeah, this is our last boss. So we're already at the last level. Like I said, it's a short game, but it's not an easy game. It is definitely one, though, where uh, with practice, uh, you should be able to get through it somewhat consistently with a little bit of luck, of course. Let's go ahead and use our magic. Oh, not good. Yeah, so this is Death Adder. He's like the big bad guy in this series. And I don't remember if 
the jump kick works well against him. Oh, that's not good. All right, this might be our last continue. Yeah, and I don't think these skeletons really... They just, if they die, they keep coming back. So you always have to deal with them on this fight. Pretty sure. Do they keep coming back? Maybe they don't. Let's find out. Nice. Oh, managed to jump over. Oh, look at that reach. That didn't even hit me. That hitbox is huge. Huge hitbox. Okay, skeleton is dead. Oh, it worked! We actually beat Golden Axe! Granted, we had to continue <laughs> several times, but I think that was our last continue. Uh, I think if I died there, we would not have beaten the game. But hey, we were successful on at least one of these playthroughs. That's great. Or attempted playthroughs. Yeah, so in the Genesis port, if, uh, you know, after this part, uh, you actually go inside, and there's a whole extra, like, you know, dungeon. You have to fight Death Adder again. Except, I want to say in that version, the skeletons keep respawning. Or they, they don't die. Yeah, this is a really funny ending. I actually remember seeing this back in the day. I actually beat this with a friend in the arcade. You just keep pumping quarters in. And uh, it was a good feeling beating the game and seeing this little sequence. It's real fun. You see Opa Opa in the background. That's uh, from Fantasy Zone. And all the characters come out. You see Pachinko on the left. Japan lo loves its Pachinko. <laughs> uh, good times, good times. <laughs> well, I will say of these uh, classic collections, or not really collections, but these classic games that you can get, uh, Shinobi and Golden Axe are definitely the best. Altered Beast has those sound issues, which is uh, quite unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, Shinobi and Golden Axe are still worth it. I'd, I'd say... If you can get past the sound issues in Golden and Altered Beast, you you know maybe it's still worth checking out. But Shinobi and Golden Axe are definitely the most solid of these emulation packages, that's for sure. And uh, now Golden Axe by itself, like I said in the beginning, I don't think you can get it separately. I checked Microsoft's website and it's just it says uh, unable to purchase separately, even though it's got the original box art for this release. Um, let me actually kind of like uh, go to my 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 games menu here. Uh, just to show you uh, some of the other collections. So this is what the Golden Axe release looks like. And actually, if I can, I can go to the very top, uh, go to, uh, how the hell do you do it? Okay, small tiles, we'll go to large tiles just so you can see a little bit better. Uh, but Golden Axe down here, you'll notice it actually uses the Genesis box art. So this is the one that you can see, you, you'll, you'll see on Microsoft's website, but it, uh, it says it's just not available separately. So previously it was five bucks. Uh, uh, so yeah. Um, but you can actually come down here. Uh, let's see, Sega Vintage Collection. I have several of them. Uh, I've got Alex Kidd. I've got uh, Monster World. It actually looks like I don't have the Golden Axe one, but one of these Sega Vintage Collections here, uh, it, you know, it'll have the same type of art. You can still buy that on Microsoft's website or through the Xbox Marketplace. Uh, and it's 10 bucks. You get, apparently, I think you get the arcade Golden Axe. Uh, you might even get the Genesis one as well. I'm not sure because I don't own it. If anyone wants to clarify, uh, do let me know. Um, but these are actually, the these later collections, these three for ones are actually really, really solid. They were developed by M2, whereas the ones I just showed off, like Shinobi here, which again has the Master System box art, which is kind of awful, but whatever. It's kind of charming at the same time. Um, you know, the three for one deals from M2 are actually really, really solid collections. Uh, I love this Alex Kidd collection because it's got the arcade super hang on, which is really cool. And then it's got Alex Kidd, America World and Revenge or Return or Revenge of Shinobi. Um, and then there's the Monster World bundle and the Golden Axe bundle. I think there's one 
Uh, that's also like a Streets of Rage bundle, or it's got some of the Streets of Rage games on it. So yeah, really cool stuff here. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out today. I hope you enjoyed this three for one quick play. Uh, maybe I'll do some other three for ones down the road if I find games that are short enough to where it could work. Um, but uh, otherwise, we're just gonna be doing a bunch of you know one off games, uh, which is usually what I'm best at. So, but uh, if you uh, like this series, uh, let me know down in the comments below if you have anything else that you'd like to eventually see me play. Uh, also let me know and I'll add it to a list. I may or may not do him, but uh, at least I'll have them on a list and I can consider them uh, for future quick plays. Uh, as always, stay tuned for future actual recorded, sc not scripted, but structured, edited Let's Plays. <laughs> I'm hoping to record another one sometime soon. Uh, also, stay tuned for uh, my, my future live streams. You know, they happen typically on a weekly basis, oftentimes, you know, anywhere between Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, uh, typically Sunday. Uh, so watch out for those. And uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say, guys. So thanks once again for watching. And until the next one, take it easy.